What's up, YouTubers? This is Lawrence Ryan here, coming to you live once again from the tunnel. I hope everybody's staying safe, wearing your mask, practicing social distancing, and getting us closer to that point of immunity where we need to be. There's some light at the end of the tunnel here. Very dark tunnel it has been, but some light. We have several vaccines that seem to be uh, working. They seem to be effective, but it's going to take a very long time for them to get enough doses for it to actually affect any kind of immunity that's going to be realistic. So stay safe, everybody. Okay, so today's vlog is about that box I just brought in. That box kind of represents one of the founding principles of the Rebel Tunnel vlog, uh, credo, if you will, uh, that you never pay retail for anything at all, ever. You don't pay retail. The reason being there's so much competition online right now, you can always find something that's a better deal. Sometimes it takes a little while for it actually to come down in price. And that is what happened with what I hope is in this box. I'm hoping that is a camera that I recently purchased. And there's no markings on the box, so I have no idea if it is or not. So I might be uh, surprised when I open that box. We're going to do an unboxing here in a second. But I just want to mention that uh, it is supposed to be, it is supposed to be a Leica Velux Type 114 DSLR type camera, which a while ago when it came out, camera retailed around $1,300 or $1,400. Wasn't going to pay that, didn't have it to pay him. So I waited and the camera came out about six years ago. So fast forward 2020, you now have a new version of that camera coming out. So I started seeing the price start to fall a little bit and a little bit more and a little bit more. And eventually it got to a reasonable level. Now you can see prices roughly half of what they originally were when these stores are trying to blow these things out because the new model is coming in and everybody wants the new model. It isn't necessarily a better model, but it's a new model. So this particular camera, the Velux Type 114, initially uh was around like i said 13 1400 if you got it with a case and maybe a strap it might have been around 1600 this was roughly half of that when i picked it up i got it from a place called sammy's on the west coast never heard of them uh they just had a great price i took a chance i uh, did some checking on them they got some good reviews and everything i don't even know if it's a brick and mortar or if it's just an online store but a pretty good deal all right so let's take a look and see what's in this box There's nothing it says where it's from. It's a whole lot of these, a lot of these. Cheetos. Looks like a box inside a box inside a box. I think that's pretty much it. This could go away. have again with no labels on it kind of nondescript I'm getting a little scared but let's see and by the way this is supposed to be a multi-tool looks more like a Rambo type thing but it was cheap so ah okay now, Sammy's camera. So this is the camera. The backing list. Stuck there. Okay. This looks more like a manufacturer's box. There it is. Leica Velux. Yeah. 
And inside here, pretty nice breeze, pretty nice box, nice presentation. Showing the three items. Got the camera in the bag and the strap. Okay. It's like a big piece of foam. This looks like the camera itself. That is the camera. Nice looking bag. This, I have no idea. Take a look at that in a second. That must be the strap. Feels like Christmas. Wait, it is Christmas. Oh, yeah. Okay, so Velux. This looks like uh, a CD-ROM or a DVD, which might be the copy of Adobe Lightroom, which actually also comes with this kit, which is a nice addition. There's actually a manual. Nice presentation here. And inside here in foam in the box taped up nicely is the Velux pretty substantial feeling ergonomics to it if you will it looks like there is some other stuff in here battery charger looks like a lens type cap battery and a USB cable for file transfers a strap and this is a lens cap so that's that this it's a very nice looking camera bag. It's called Ona, O-N-A. I now Ona, no, never mind. Ona, it feels like it's pretty solid. Not that big. A lot of foam in here. And yet another strap. Straps for days. Pretty decent looking. I don't know if I'd use this that often because it's kind of small and you're always carrying like GoPros and widgets and things to attach things and all kinds of stuff. So it is a bit small, but it's not bad. Hey, for the price, it's very good. And then this in a Leica bag, I don't know exactly why it, cause I don't think Leica made this, but we'll see what it is. It's like it was hand tied. Oh, this is this. This is another strap. Yet another strap. This is the one I expected to get, though. This strap is actually made from climbing rope, which gives it some sturdiness and some thickness to it. So you don't really have to worry about this ever breaking. Cool. Awesome. All right. So one of the reasons I chose this camera, by the way, and I'll get into the specs a little bit later on this, but this is what is known as a bridge camera, which means basically it has many of the functions of a DSLR. What I found out about this camera was that it had features beyond a lot of DSLRs. Uh, it's got a one inch sensor, which is pretty large. A one inch sensor means that you have much more flexibility in low light situations. I was also checking out the Canon 80D, which is also a very good camera but the Canon 80D does not even have a one inch sensor. I think it's got like a 0.8 something inch sensor. This camera also shoots 4K video, which you will not get in the Canon 80D or other cameras of that ilk, which are you know pretty much full standard DSLRs. So 4K video, it's got a one inch sensor. It's got an articulated fold out monitor, which flips around to the front, making it great for vlogging as well. And it's got the equivalent of a 25 millimeter to 400 millimeter zoom lens, which means you're covering many, many options with that. Lots of flexibility, 
without the need to have to change lenses. So this is why this camera was referred to as the Swiss Army knife of cameras. On to the review. All right, so the review. First and foremost, I just wanted to mention that I was not approached to do this review. There was no sponsor, no free stuff was given to me. Uh, it's just something that I felt that others uh, who might be looking for a camera or looking for information on this camera might benefit from. And of course, finding deals, saving money, and avoiding getting gouged, cornerstones of this vlog. Okay, so first up, functionality. Let's start with the menus. Okay, so the menus on this camera are accessed by a four point circular dial located on the back of the camera and by five programmable function buttons located around the body. Menus are very comprehensive and easy to navigate. And if there's something you don't understand in the menus, there are scrolling text definitions for each function uh, right across the top of the screen as soon as you move the cursor over the function. Very useful and very helpful, especially if you're new to the camera. The electronic viewfinder and the flip out screen are very crisp and clear, and all the function buttons seem to be intelligently placed on the body. Which brings up an interesting feature, right where your thumb sits here on the camera, there is a thumb wheel toggle, which allows you to switch back and forth between your aperture, your shutter speed, and your, in some modes, your ISO, without taking your eye off the shot. Very useful when you have something that could go away very quickly and you want to get. It's a nice function. Uh, the shutter button has a pretty standard half to press function. When you press the button halfway down, you get your autofocus setup and your shot preview. And the zoom rocker is located right in front of that, easily accessible to the index finger. And the zoom function is actually very precise. The smaller the angle of the zoom rocker, the slower the zoom progression. The faster the angle, the faster the zoom progression. Works very well. Okay, autofocus. So the Leica spec for the autofocus time on this camera is listed at 100 milliseconds, which even by the standard of cameras that cost thousands of dollars more is lightning fast. So in fairness, those numbers can be subjective. Autofocus times can vary depending on a lot of factors like your f-stop, uh, the shooting mode, autofocus mode, lighting situations. But I will say that in using this camera over the past couple of weeks, it is amazingly fast with regard to autofocus. The ducks you just saw were swimming away and they caught my eye and I turned and the autofocus grabbed them almost immediately so I didn't miss that shot. There are also a variety of autofocus modes to choose from. You have a single area mode, a pinpoint mode. There are two multi-area autofocus modes. Uh, the first one is a 49 point mode that selects the object closest to the camera as the focal point. 
And the second one is a custom 49 point autofocus mode where you select the actual point where you want the camera to focus, which could be creatively pretty interesting. Uh, there is eye and face detection mode, which I tried also and works very well, gives you a nice portrait. And last but not least, you have the tracking mode, which basically allows you to specify the focus and exposure of an object, and it will follow that object around in space. Now, I tried this over about a 20 foot section. It seemed to work pretty well. I had, didn't get an opportunity to try it over a large space, but I imagine it would work very well for sports photography. So very interesting there. Okay, next up, battery life. So the Leica spec for this camera with regard to battery life is listed as 360 shots per charge, which by comparison to other cameras might be considered a little bit low. But I have to say those numbers again can be subjective. People have different shooting styles. Some people take more time to set up a shot. Some people might be shooting more video like me. So they can be subjective. I'll say that uh, I went out for an afternoon shot several hours of both video and stills, came home, reviewed the footage, and still had plenty of battery to go out the next day and do more. So I'd say that's above average. Charging time they list for a full charge to be 240 minutes. I found the full charge from zero to full in that battery to be closer to 90 minutes. And that may be because the battery technology has improved since the spec was written six years ago. They may be using new batteries. I'm not sure. Okay, next up, shooting modes. So the shooting modes are accessed via a dial located on the top of the camera. It's a pretty standard location for that. In addition to manual mode, where you set the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO, you have aperture priority, where you set the aperture and the camera sets the shutter speed. You have shutter priority, where you set the shutter speed and the camera sets the aperture. And you have full program mode, where the camera will set both the aperture and the shutter speed. And you have some control over brightness in that mode. You also have a scene mode, which allows you to select from various similar scenes that you're shooting, or maybe even not, maybe try an alternate and see if it's creative. Um, you have certain selections in there like blue skies and um, night sky and different types of scenes that you can select from. There's also a creative mode on the dial, which allows you to select various effects. You've got uh, some grayscale effects, sepia effects, things like that, some star effects, and uh, you can choose to uh, preview those before you shoot those. What I found very interesting about that is you can also utilize some of these effects and scenes when you're shooting video. Also very interesting. So you can get some creative ideas for that. A lot of people like to do that in post as I do, but it can still give you some interesting ideas. Next up, you have two custom slots on this dial, which allow you to store your own settings. So if you have some go-to settings that you use for a job or that you just use all the time, you can store those in there. And those allow you to store four sets of settings. And then last, you have full auto mode, which essentially makes it a point and shoot. Uh, they call it the snapshot mode. All right, next up, camera weight. Okay, so this camera weighs in at 29.3 ounces, which is essentially 1.8 pounds. Uh, the conventional wisdom is that if you have a large sensor or a one-inch sensor like this has, you need a larger lens, which translates into more weight. I did not find that this camera was unwieldy whatsoever or heavy whatsoever. It feels very light and very manageable. Uh, but I did do some research on it. I looked up uh, the equivalent lens and body of a set like this. Uh, I got a lens which was the equivalent. This is a 25 to 400 millimeter lens. I looked up one which was similar. It was a 100 to 400 millimeter lens. And that came in about three pounds itself. And then the camera body I looked at was a, a Canon 80D, which came in close to two pounds without the battery. So if you put those together with the battery and the lens, you're looking at a package that weighs something around five to six pounds. So a considerable difference there. Okay, so next up, cool and potentially unique features of the Leica VLUX 114. Unlike most cameras, which might have a video button and perhaps even some resolution settings, 
This camera allows you to set the exposure mode to manual when shooting video. Now, if you don't shoot video, skip to the next section, but that's a very powerful thing. So you can set your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO settings when shooting a video. You can change your settings for every video you shoot. Very useful when you need to change lighting situations or you want to change the look of something. So that's very powerful. The next cool and potentially unique feature is the electronic viewfinder eye sensor. The viewfinder has a sensor that detects when your eye is there and automatically turns on the electronic viewfinder and turns off the flip screen. As soon as you move your eye away, it turns off the viewfinder and turns on the flip screen. It's a very cool feature. And it may also be part of the reason why I'm seeing the extended battery life, because many cameras have those both on at the same time. Okay, the next feature, built-in intervalometer and processing. If you don't know what an intervalometer is, you can buy these things for other cameras that don't have them. Um, it allows you to do time-lapse photography. You can set the interval and the number of shots and the camera will automatically take that number of shots over that interval. Many cameras do have that now. I think Canon's and the Panasonic's and a lot of other cameras do have that, but I'm not sure they have the processing. What I mean by that is once you're done taking your time-lapse photographs, you can then process those into a time-lapse video right on the camera. Then when you're editing, you just transfer the video clip and you don't have to transfer 800 photographs and then do the processing in post. So that to me is a big time saver in the workflow. Very, very cool. All right. Now in reading about this camera, I came across some negative comments, which were insignificant to me, obviously, since I got the camera, but they might not be to you. So I'm going to mention them here. The first comment was about charging. Um, you charge the battery with this camera like you would with many others. It comes with an accompanying charger and you put the battery in and when it's charged, you take it out, put it in the camera and go. Um, but you do not charge it in this camera by plugging in the USB cable to the camera. Okay, To some people, that's a desirable thing. It was not a deal breaker for me whatsoever. The other comment was that the camera does not have a touch screen, which is true. As I mentioned, you access the screen and the menus via the four point circular dial in the back of the camera and by the five function buttons. Now, touch screens are nice. Um, I do question whether or not you wanna be pushing on a flip out screen that much. I mean, you might be wearing out that hinge pretty quick, but to each his or her own on that one. In closing, I will just say that given the number of features and the price point of this camera, you know, even without a touch screen, it's a total win. And it seems to be living up to its moniker as the Swiss Army knife of cameras. All right, all right, all right. So that's my review of the Leica V Looks Type 114 camera. I hope you found it useful. Please leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or any details to add or just to say hi. Don't forget to like and subscribe and or follow. Smash that notification button. You know, those things, by the way, the subscribes, the comments, and the likes, all of those things are what keep a channel alive and viable. Because the more of them you have, the more YouTube moves the video up in the ranking. Very, very helpful and much appreciated. This is Lawrence Ryan signing off the Rebel Tunnel. Stay safe, be well, and I'll see you on the other side.